In this video, we'll be taking quadratics that are written in vertex form and rewriting them into standard form. So let's kind of refresh our memories about what these two forms look like. So remember that vertex form is written so that it has an h value and a k value. The h value is inside parentheses squared with x, and then the k value is on the outside. Standard form doesn't contain any parentheses at all, and it has all of our like terms combined. Remember that quadratics can be written in both forms. They're not different types of functions, it's just a different way of writing them. So we're going to be taking quadratics that are written in this form, and we're going to be rewriting them so that they are now in standard form. So let's jump in and look at an example here. So here we can clearly see the difference between vertex form and standard form. The big difference is that we have this parentheses squared. This parentheses squared really complicates things because standard form doesn't have any parentheses. Vertex form does. So we need to rewrite this form without parentheses if we want to turn it into standard form. The other tricky part is this 3 out in front, because of this squared here, we can't di just distribute the 3 in. That squared there really complicates things. So not only does vertex form have parentheses that make it different, but that squared makes it difficult because we can't just distribute 3 in and get rid of the parentheses that way. So the first thing we really need to address is this squared around the parentheses. And we know from talking about polynomials previously that parentheses squared really is implying that we have x minus 2 times itself. That's really what the definition of squared is. So we can rewrite this entire expression by instead of writing x minus 2 quantity squared, we can write 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is the definition of squared. It's just something times itself. So this is looking a little bit better. We've at least gotten the squared out of the problem, so we can now hopefully start to rewrite this a little bit further. However, because there are two sets of parentheses here, these are still making this a little bit more complicated, and we'd still like to consolidate this down to one set of parentheses. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply these together using our multiplying polynomials that we've learned about previously. We know that we can multiply what's underlined in purple there by taking everything in the first parenthesis and multiplying it by everything in the second parenthesis. So we're going to multiply this further and consolidate it into one parenthesis. So here if we take x times x, that becomes x squared. We then take x times negative 2, which is negative 2x, negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x, and negative 2 times negative 2, which is a positive 4. So then we look closer and we see that we have some like terms we can combine. So this becomes x squared minus 4x plus 4, all in parentheses. Then we want to make sure we carry down the rest of our problem. So we have y equals the 3 out in front and then minus 5 off to the back. So, so far, we've been able to deal with our squared by writing x minus 2 times x minus 2, and then we were able to use our multiplying polynomials trick to get this down to one set of parentheses. Now, because I have one set of parentheses and no exponent on the outside of it, I can now actually undo the whole set of parentheses by distributing in my 3. So I now have y equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 12 and then that minus 5 off to the side. And now I see I am very, very close to standard form. I really just have one more step. And if I combined the like terms that I see, which are 12 and negative 5, my final equation, which will be written in standard form, is 3x squared minus 12x then plus 7 on the end.